Good morning. There's such a spirit of joy here this morning. I absolutely love it, and I know it's, it makes our Father's heart very happy to see His children and His creation celebrating and praising Him. How would you complete this sentence for me? Christmas is... <laughs> Christmas is grape jelly. What? <laughs> Uh, for those who haven't been around for a while, every year uh, we grow grapes at our, at our house. We have a, a couple of grape vines that grow up and grow a lot of grapes. And my wife, Shelly, makes homemade grape jelly. And there are several cases out there uh, for you to take with you. Everybody, <laughs> take, take one per home, please, so that everybody gets a chance to get one. And if you already have one, several of you do, please let others partake, partake first before you start taking more. Because that's all we have. It's, uh, it's all gone. So yeah, Christmas is great jelly. <laughs> what else? How else would you an- finish that sentence? Christmas is... Big old fat Santa Claus. Big old fat Santa Claus. <laughs> Joy. What else? Lights. Giving. Football. Pot roast? What? Oh, love. See where, you can see where my mind is. I, someone says love, and I hear pot roast. Yeah. Big old fat. Okay. Yeah. Charlie Brown. Good. What else? Christmas is family, a baby, a baby born. Good. Anything else? What? A day off. A day off. Anything else? Christmas is celebration. Family, absolutely. Tradition. Tradition. Yeah. Joy to the world. Absolutely. Christmas is all these things and probably more. And Christmas is light and peace. And uh, this morning we uh, lit the fourth candle of the Advent. This is the peace candle. The, the messenger candle is also called. And when Jesus becomes a subject of your life, he gives you this opportunity to be his messenger. Every single one of us, if Jesus is the subject of our lives, we are his messenger. So as we light the messenger candle, which is the messenger of peace, we're reminded today that in the Advent, we are messengers of his peace. We are light bearers of the peace that Christ brings. The thing is, you can't be a messenger of something of which you don't have. You can't take a message to someone if you don't own the message, and the message doesn't own you. And so you can't be a messenger of peace unless you have the peace that Jesus can give, that only Jesus can give. And you can't be a messenger of light unless you have the the light of Christ within you. So this is our theme uh, today as we kind of wrap up our Advent season, or uh, actually we'll, we'll totally wrap up on Christmas Eve night for our Come and Go Communion time. We'd invite you to take note of that. The times are in your weekly and, and come out on Christmas Eve and it's come and go. So come and take communion and have prayer with your family here on that night. But today we're going to wrap it up by looking at this passage of Scripture. So who's got your Bibles? So turn to Matthew chapter 5 if you do have your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to take one from the book rack there and turn to page 736 if you use the book rack Bible. And Matthew chapter 5, not traditionally a, what we think of as a, as a Christmas uh, passage, but it certainly ties in with what we've been studying and reading and discussing over the last few weeks. So this takes place a long time ago in a Galilee far, far away. <laughs> no, really. In this region of Galilee, Jesus went to this, this, this place on this hillside it really was in the region of Galilee. I'm not making it up. And there, he began to preach and teach. And there's this famous sermon that while there was this evil empire, really was, that was trying to control everything, Jesus began to be a new hope and bring rebellion to this empire. He was uh, definitely better than any Jedi that you could ever imagine. So here is Jesus on this mountainside. The Sermon on the Mount is where this passage comes from. And this is kind of the famous sermon of Jesus, where a lot of our, our understanding of the way of Christ comes from. And as he's there on this, this mountainside, this hillside in the, in the Galilee, he calls his followers unto him. And, and many come who followers, many who've heard about him, people come from all over the place to come and hear what Jesus had to say. And he draws in his followers in close, and he draws them to experience the light that he came to bring. And not to experience, but then to actually 
receive that light and become that light. And so these words in chapter 5, verse 14, say to us as well as those disciples back then, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Let's pray. Lord, our desire is that everyone would praise you. Lord, we're gathered here this morning and, and most of us know you as our Heavenly Father. And Lord, our desire is to praise you, not just in this moment and in this season, but Lord, in our daily lives and in our homes and our jobs and in our schools and where we may find ourselves. Lord, that is our, our desire. But Lord, you would charge us that others would be impacted by our lives and they would bring you praise and glory. And so, Lord, we must be this light of the world that you say that we are. Jesus, we understand you are the light and we have none of our own, but, Lord, you want to shine in us and through us. And so this morning, Lord, may we come with open minds and open hearts and open ears to receive what you have for us. And as we do, we acknowledge that the Holy Spirit of God, that you are here with us, you have brought us together, and you are our teacher. And you desire not to just teach us for the sake of receiving and retaining information, but you want to empower us and impact us in such a way that our hands and our feet are motivated and our tongues and our ears are activated by your love and your spirit to be the body of Christ and to be the light of the world and shine. And so, God, we confess we can't do this without you. And we've tried. And sometimes we feel like we've done pretty good for a while, but, Lord, we know that you are holy and we're not unless you fill us with yourself. And we thank you, Jesus that you now fill us with your own self, your own spirit, so that we can live and shine as you desire us to be. So make us the light of the world and the light here in Hot Springs and continue to shine and let our good deeds shine so that you will be lifted up and glorified. Because Jesus, you are the subject, not just of this gathering this morning, not just of Christmas, but of every day of our lives. And we love you. And it's in your precious and holy name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Thank you. Uh, you should have been handed an outline in your weekly when you came in today, and I'd like for you to take that out. We're going to track through a few things about the light as kind of revealed to us in this scripture and how we can apply this to our lives. So let me give you this, this big idea for this today. Once you move out of your own darkness, we can shine God's light into the rest of the world. Once we move out of our own darkness, we can then shine the light of God into the rest of the world. So how does this happen? Here's, here's kind of the... I hate to give like processes and steps because everything's not exactly that way. But when it comes to Christ, it kind of works this way. The first thing we have to do is behold the light. We have to behold the light. In order to be the light of the world, we first have to see and experience the light of the world. And I would love that somebody said a, a few minutes ago, Christmas is, and somebody said lights. And um, just a quick uh, unofficial poll. How many people like really love Christmas lights? Like when houses and town, there's whole towns that do Christmas lights, and, and I love those things. Um, yeah, absolutely. This year, um, we have a five-year-old and a four-year-old that just absolutely for the first time, they're both just wide awake to everything about Christmas this year. And the day after Thanksgiving, we took a little ride, and there were Christmas lights being lit up where we were. Everywhere, houses were Christmas lights. And there was this one house that just was phenomenal. And I remember my wife, Shelly, saying, hey, Jericho, our five-year-old, hey, look at that one. And he went, whoa! It was like, I mean, it was like Christmas morning. Whoa! And I, where, somewhere along the way, sometimes I feel like we lose the woe of the light of, of Christmas. We lose the woe of this, the light that we have. And I, I kind of wonder, you know, this, we lose the awe and the magic of Christmas. And I wonder, do we have to? I mean, do we have to lose that? Is it, uh, no, I hope not. I hope we don't have to. I pray that Christmas and, and the Advent, for me, and I pray it for you as well, would always bring us to a sense of, whoa, to reflect that God Almighty was born as a human being, as a baby in a stable Whoa. That he loved us that much, that he lived as we live, a human existence, a human life, with exciting days and bad days and harmful days and sickness and loss of loved ones. He experienced all of this the same way we do. 
then he went to a cross and he died for us. Whoa. Whoa. But he didn't stay in the grave. Whoa! I pray we never have to lose this sense of the woe of beholding the light of Christ. Jesus says to his followers, you are the light of the world. He says, you, you're the light of the world. These are familiar words to his followers. He said this, something similar to this before. In John chapter 9, verse 5, he says, while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. They've heard these, these terms, the light of the world before. Jesus had said, I am the light of the world. And then he says, now to us, he says to them, and now he says to us, you are the light of the world. So we have to behold the light. So Jesus is the light. And when he says to his followers, you are the light of the world, what is he saying? He says, well, here we understand this is written in Greek. Jesus, uh, as he spoke this, this, this part of the Bible, the New Testament, was written in Greek. And this word that translates into English is light, and there's several words in Greek that translate as light. This specific word is phos. Let me hear you say phos. Now turn to your neighbor and say, may the phos be with you. It just keeps going. This word, it means to shine. That's, that's, that's a simple definition of this word phos. Literally, it means to make clear. Get this. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, and he says to us, you are the light of the world. The word he uses means to make clear, to show plainly. Jesus says, I am the show plainly of God's plan. And now he says to you and to me, you are to be the show plainly of God's plan, to make it clear. See, Jesus came to make God's plan clear. That's his, that was his mission, and he, he, uh, to show plainly that God is love, to show that so plainly that God wants to know you, and God wants to be known by you. That's what he means when he says, we are the light of the world. He wants us to make this known plainly and make it clear that this is who he is. So on the night Jesus was born, shepherds came in from the fields to behold the light. Mary and Joseph, there in the stable, the most humble of places a baby could be born, behold the light. A short time later, probably a couple of years later, wise men, the magi from the east, came to behold the light. As Jesus grew, he walked and he taught and he did miracles and he healed people. And many people came from all over the place to behold the light. Fishermen came to behold the light. Tax collectors came to behold the light. The good, the bad, the ugly came to behold the light. Prostitutes and the worst sinners imaginable came to behold the light. The reason Jesus, the light of the world, brings us peace is because... His light is the grace of God. That no matter who you are, you can come to Him and behold this light that God's grace is here for you and for me. His amazing grace is the light. Get that. God's amazing grace is the light. And Jesus came to show us that God's amazing grace is for everyone. Shepherds, magi, rich, poor, good, bad, ugly, prostitutes, sinners, tax collectors, even lawyers, and even politicians, yes, they came. Jesus came to show that God's amazing grace is for everyone. So behold the light. But, but to be the light, you have to do more than behold it. You have to do more than experience. And, and this is, challenges me because I'm kind of an experiential person. The experience is kind of how I learn things. But then you have to go further than just experience the light. You have to believe the light. Behold the light and believe the light. There's a movie called Elf that... Many of you have probably seen, and um, it's a few years old now, but there's a, a, part, a, a subplot of the movie is that the Christmas spirit is gone, and Santa Claus's sleigh will no longer fly by the Christmas spirit that enabled the reindeer and the, the magic of Christmas quotes. Um, so Santa has had to have rocket-powered boosters put on his sleigh to help actually make this thing fly because people just don't believe anymore. And so this leads to a very... Very difficult situation when Santa's rockets go out in Central Park in New York. So watch this scene of the movie and see about what it's like to, what it's like to believe. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> Buddy, we need power. We're gonna crash. He's making a list, 
checking it twice Gonna find out who's naughty and nice Santa Claus is coming to town He sees you when you're sleeping He knows when you're awake He knows if you've been bad or good So be good for goodness sake Oh, you better watch out You better not cry You better not cry I'm telling you why I'm getting too old for this job. Now! Could it be that for some of us, maybe we've lost the Christmas spirit, maybe not so much because we've lost the the magic of believing in Santa, but because we've lost the real reality that it's about the light of Jesus Christ. That maybe we've replaced that reality with something else that we've lost, that uh, we struggle to believe the light that Jesus came to bring. That's what Christmas is all about, right? that Jesus came to bring us light and peace and joy and hope. Jesus tells us no one lights a lamp and hides it under a basket. Instead, the light is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, the original folks that Jesus was speaking to and that Matthew was writing to when he wrote this, um, they didn't have electricity. That's probably not a news flash for you, but they didn't have the kind of electricity we have. To get light, they had to light a lamp similar to a candle that we have here. And they wanted to put it up on a stand because you didn't want the the candles low. You don't want them on the ground or low to the ground. You wanted them up high enough to give light to the entire room that you were in so that everybody could see what was going on there. To get a light, you had to get it up high so that it could shine for everyone to be able to see. Jesus says, "This, this is what our behavior is like. When you really believe something, you shine. Your behavior shows what you really believe. Hide it under a bushel? No. If, the, if all the lights go out in the middle of the night and I light a flashlight and then cover it with a towel? He said, that's ridiculous. You can't do that with this light, Jesus says. I'm giving you have to believe. And what we believe, what we truly believe, is revealed by our behavior. It really is. Because a lot of times we say we believe a lot of things, but our actions show that we believe something else. And what we really believe is revealed by our behavior. So shepherds. Shepherds believed Jesus was the Messiah. And they went back to their flocks, praising God and rejoicing and telling everybody what they'd seen and heard. The wise man believed Jesus was the Messiah, and they bowed down and they gave him gifts that cost them something. 
those who eventually came to be Jesus' closest followers, his disciples and friends, they believed he was the Messiah. They left family, friends, jobs, occupations, traditions. They left their lifestyles. They left everything to follow Jesus because Jesus truly was the subject. He was the light, and their belief impacted the way they lived. What we truly believe is revealed by our behavior. Look at what else Jesus says in Luke 6, 46. Why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? Why do you keep saying you believe I'm the Lord when you don't do what I say? Lord implies you do what that person says. Now, admittedly, this take time. It takes time. This isn't a snap. Okay, I believe Jesus is Lord, and it's automatic. Sometimes it is, absolutely. But for most of us, following Jesus, it's a lifelong journey that we learn and we grow. And every step of the way, we're learning something and we're growing as we get closer to him. And we dare not, dare not use these words, well, it takes time, and he's still working on me as a cop-out for bad behavior. We realize it does take time. He is still working on me so that he can change me and I can grow because that's what happens for us. If Jesus is a subject of our lives, the mistakes that we make, we see them as opportunities to grow. And they are opportunities to grow. And as we grow, we become more and more like Jesus. So we behold the light and we believe the light. And as we believe the light, he helps us to grow to be more like him. And on this journey, we begin to then become the light. When we behold the light and believe the light, then we begin to become the light and to let our light shine, not just at Christmas and then take it down for the rest of the year and then put the light up again on Easter and then take it down. Maybe we need to have our lights up all year long. Watch this video from the skit, guys. takes care of the back of the house. You want to you wanna go around and take the lights off the front? Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, hey, by the way, thank you. If it wasn't for you, I don't know who'd get on that roof. You are awesome. Yeah. He's uh, at the house you're talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. They leave their lights up all year round. They leave their lights on all year long. Here, check it out. So they leave their lights on all year long? All year long. And those bulbs change according to whatever holiday season it is. Get out. Can't wish I could. So like July 4th? Those bulbs come red, white, and blue. Thanksgiving. Harvest colors. Halloween. Black and orange. Memorial Day. Camouflage. Get out. Can't wish I could. Oh, I, I bet it's embarrassing for the neighbor. Oh, the neighbor. We're totally embarrassed. We complain about it all the time. Oh, and when there is no holiday season going on, those bulbs become little red hot chili pepper lights. What? Yep. Give me one good reason why you should celebrate the pepper. <sighs> Can't wish I could. Like your neighbors on a motel My wife, she's always saying, let's just leave the lights on just a little bit longer. Let's just stay in the spirit of things. But when Christmas is over, you take down the lights. Am I right? I don't know. I'm not even the right guy to ask. I don't even put lights on my house. Why don't you put lights on your house? I'm afraid of heights. But the question is, why do you put lights on your house? To celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ, all that kind of stuff. There you go. That's your answer. What? If you don't want to celebrate Christ all year long, then take the lights down. That's not what I was saying. You're putting words in my mouth. You're siding with my wife. Hey, hey, I'm not siding with anyone. And I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you and God were, uh, you know... On the outs? Yeah. We're not on the outs. Me and God, we're very tight. We're very, very tight. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Prove it. Prove what? Are you daring me to leave my lights on all year long? Hey, no dare here. I'm just saying, you gonna let your little light shine? Wait! Man the letter, my friend. What? Man that ladder. We're going to get back up there and hang these lights. No, no, no. Oh, I was just kidding. Oh, yes. It is going to be a proclamation of my faith. Didn't you hear? I- I'm afraid of heights. You're already up there. <laughs> honey, honey, get the apple cider ready. Put on the Perry Como records. These lights are going to shine. <laughs> get back here. These lights have to shine. The question for us is, are we going to let that light shine 
this Christmas season. And not just this Christmas season, but into 2016 and beyond. Are we going to let the, our light shine? When Jesus says, you're the light of the world, he follows that up with, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. That's the point. That's the point of our food pantry. That's the point of this stomp out hunger thing that we've done. That's the point of getting shoes to send overseas and, and, re- and getting, collecting coats and blankets to hand out. The point is not to look at us and there's a side point of meeting a need. But the real point is, is we want people to see and know and praise our Heavenly Father. That's why. Helping others, serving others takes the focus off of us and puts it on those that we help and serve. And when we do it in Jesus' name, it takes the focus off of us and puts it where it really belongs, and that's Jesus. So when you help others in Jesus' name, your light is shining. Helping others shows them, that, shows them who Jesus is. Helping others shows them who Jesus is. We get all tied up in witnessing and evangelism and you know, that kind of stuff. And really, helping others and serving others in Jesus' name shows them who he is. What if we change some of our questions that we have from, you know, how could God bless me? What if we change that question to, how might God want to use me or work through me to bless others? What if we changed our question from, what's in it for me? To, how can God work through me to benefit someone else? Maybe someone who's never heard and never experienced this light. Someone who's never beheld the light. How can God shine through me to shine into their life? Our responsibility doesn't end with beholding the light. That's what Christmas is about. The Advent is about the light to behold, a Christ child, the baby, and everybody loves the little baby. Just ask the... uh, (laughs) She's a little baby in our congregation. And that's, that's where it begins. But our responsibility goes beyond that. As we believe the light, we absorb the light of Christ. It comes, becomes a part of us so that it shines out from us. When Jesus enters our lives, his light shines through us into the world. And that's what he wants. That's what he desires. The unfortunate thing about the church in, in America is that we're known for a reputation of slander and, 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 and dark things instead of light and uh, shadows and, and those kind of things are associated when people talk about church these days. And it's unfortunate because we are to be the light of the world. And we should be shining. We're known for hiding the light under a basket or like that old song, hide it under a bushel. No! We should be the big no and let it shine. We're called to be light, and we cannot hide that light under a basket. You can't shine. You, you, you cannot shine if you, if you hide it in sin and selfishness. You cannot let, the light of Christ cannot shine if you hide it with sin and selfishness selfishness so Jesus is the light and he shines and if you're not shining he's inviting you to come get that light he's inviting you to get the light and be shiny and once we move out of our own darkness we can shine God's light into the rest of the world what might it look like for us to live as lighthouses shining the light of Christ What might it look like for us to shine the light of Christ to a world full of shadows? How might your light draw people out of their darkness? This is our mission. To shine so that others are drawn out of their darkness. This is our mission. This is why we become the light of the world. Jesus didn't say you're the light of the world and leave it at that. He told us why. And another place in Scripture reminds us of that. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's masterpiece created anew in Christ Jesus. That's awesome. So we can do good, the good things that he planned for us long ago. We're the light of the world. So go and be light. Light dispels darkness. In Christ we shine with peace. This is what the Advent is supposed to be. The light of peace entering into one life going to another, going to another. A few minutes ago, we we lit up this room with candles. And that's what the peace of Christ is supposed to be. 
But if we refuse to hold our candle out, we can't receive the light and we can't receive the peace. Don't refuse the light and the peace of Christ. He wants to give it to you so freely. And the darkness cannot overcome this light because this light can never be extinguished. The world longs for this peace. Have you noticed that? Our world is crying out for the peace of Christ. Only in so many ways the world is refusing to hold the candle up to receive it. We've got to keep shining the light and offering it. So the world needs this light. We have to go and be shiny. And I would invite you today, if you need this peace, if you need this light of Christ, come and ask Jesus to shine in you as we adore him. We're going to sing this song after we pray. Would you stand with me, everyone? Lord, we love you. We come and we adore you. You are love and you inspire love within us. And it's not just a, a simply a feeling, but it's a choice. It becomes a part of us. It's who we become. It's, we become the love as we become the light. Lord, we want to give it back to you. May, oh, come let us adore him. Be more than a song. May it be the way we live. So we invite you to do that in us, to equip us, enable us, continue to change us, become more like you so that we can have this light. Lord Jesus, today, light us up. Give us peace because this is what we need. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen.